Aloha, and welcome to A Better Day. I'm Senator Sam Sloan, and I hope you'll join us for the next half hour, because I promise you an interesting program. It'll be information, it'll be educational, and you're going to learn some things. Well, you notice I have my, my summer do. It's hot, right? Hot. And look at the summer just whizzing by, just like this year has gone by. But we've had a lot of things that have occurred during uh, the past several weeks since we last met. Uh, we've had two special sessions in the legislature. One was pretty cut and dry to approve two judges. The second one, though, was not cut and dry. It was to override the governor's veto on the Maui Hospital bill. This was very interesting from a number of uh, perspectives because uh, the legislature, uh, predominantly of the majority party, didn't want to override a governor's veto. They had only done it once before, and that was Governor Cayetano's veto of the age of consent bill. Uh, and since statehood, that was the only majority party's veto, governor's veto, that was overridden. So there was a lot riding on this. But the uh, UPW had gone to court to block the privatization of the Maui Memorial and uh, Lanai uh, hospitals. And um, it was interesting because, look, we were hemorrhaging money for years. And without some help, um, the hospitals on Maui would have gone down. Well, Kaiser stepped forward, and they were going to take over the operations as of July 1st. But the court challenge uh, and the uh, subsequent uh, action by the court uh, halted that. We went into special session. The governor, meanwhile, had vetoed that bill, saying two things. <coughs> the cost was prohibitive. There was no money in the appropriation bill. And the cost could have gone as high as $60 million. And secondly, and probably more importantly, the Internal Revenue Service had indicated that the bill was flawed in that it provided for choices in the employee's retirement system that were not allowed under tax law. And if the bill were allowed to stand or become law, the IRS threatened the possible uh, removal of the tax-exempt status. Now, that would have negatively affected all employees, both active and and those retired. So it was a major consideration. We met, and you know if you're going to have an override session or you're going to have a special session, you need two-thirds of the vote of both the House and the Senate. So there was a problem getting a two-thirds vote, number one. Number two, they were trying to amend the bill. There was negotiating going on. Um, my problem with the process was that I thought it put the legislature in a position of negotiating for a labor union. In this case, not the UPW, but the Hawaii Government Employees Association, the HGEA. And it had to do with employee benefits, severance pay, a lot of other considerations. Well, in the end, um, the uh, session overrode Governor Ige's veto. Only, as I say, the second time a majority party governor's veto had been overridden. The ramifications, however, are still there because the IRS threat is still there. And if they follow through with that or they indicate further that they're going to take action, then you can expect to see the legislature back in yet another not-so-special special session. By the way, there were four of us in the Senate that voted uh, not to override uh, the veto, uh, Senator Ihara, Thielen, Kim, and myself. Uh, we felt it was the, the wrong thing to do based on the information that we had. Uh, or lack of information at the time the bill was passed unanimously. So keep an eye on that. In addition, the Senate is going to go back into special session probably in early uh, October because there will be a couple of more uh, judges that have to go through the advise and consent process. Uh, a number of judges have indicated they're going to retire, and so that's created vacancies, and we have to take care of that. The Senate also got involved with the EGA appointment of the uh, third commissioner to the Public Utilities Commission. Now, the governor could have done that during the legislative session, but he chose not to. And the Senate was out of joint because we value our advised and consent process. And as an interim appointment, um, the former attorney to the PUC would have been on the job. As it turned out, we had the momentous vote. Uh, the PUC voted two to nothing. Uh, the new commissioner um, recused himself and did not vote two to nothing against the next era merger. And of course, as you know, that was Governor Ige's position from the outset. A um, lot of criticism of the governor and of the process because there were people that um, uh, supported that 
merger, a $4 billion merger, and now it looks like Nextera, the corporation from Florida, is going to go elsewhere, and Hawaiian Electric will have to look for either a new partner or new ways of both uh, meeting the, the mandates of uh, our new energy laws and also trying to keep um, the costs under control. And you know, you pay them every month, there seems to be uh, new additions to your bill. Look at it carefully. I tell you always, you know, look at your bills, all of them. Well, a lot of other things happened as well. We finally got hit by a tropical storm. We were lucky that most of it dissipated on the island of uh, Hawaii, but we have more coming right behind us. Hopefully it won't be a repeat of last year, but we did uh, suffer some water damage. Luckily, no, no loss of life or, or serious injuries, but we have that to look forward to until the end of November. And then a, a final note, and that is the passing of Congressman Mark Takai. Um, it was a real tragedy. Mark was only 49 years of age. Uh, I had the privilege of knowing Mark from the time he was the president of the ASUH, the student body at the University of Hawaii. Both of us served on a, an athletic advisory committee with the late Stan Sheriff. I knew his wife, Sammy. Uh, before they were married, she was with the uh, Junior Achievement of Hawaii. So uh, our deepest sympathy and condolences continue to go out to uh, Sammy and the, and the two kids. He was uh, quite a guy. He was a patriot. He was a distinguished veteran. I went to his last pinning ceremony when he became a lieutenant colonel. And probably his greatest achievement in the State House of Representatives was the creation of the Hawaii Medal of Honor uh, project and ceremony, which we had every year. So uh, we'll miss Mark Takai. Uh, he was a, a true civic leader and patriot. Well, moving on today, we still have a lot of issues. We never run out of issues. I tell everybody in my next life, in my, my next career, I'm going to be a stand-up comic. And the things that happen in our community, you couldn't make them up. And you couldn't write them. Well, one of the guys that's in the forefront of all of this and is well known, not only in the capital but in the community, is Mr. Bob Toyofuku. He's been around a long time, and he's got a lot of experience in a lot of areas. And I'm very happy to welcome Bob to a better day. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thanks, Thanks Bob. Senator. Well, Appreciate look, it. Bob, you've been you've been an attorney. Are you still a practicing attorney? No, I. Um Practiced uh, for about 10 to 12 years. Yep. And then I went up to the law school. I was teaching there. Uh huh. And I organized and set up the Continuing Legal Education Institute. Mm -hmm. Then I went to work for Congressman Heftel right. when he was in the Congress. Mm -hmm. And then that dates you. I, that <laughs> does. And then I started to lobby in my first session was 1984. So it's yeah. been. 33 years. 33 years and still yeah. going strong. And you're a well-respected individual. Thank you. Uh, not <laughs> only as a lobbyist, and it's, it's interesting, we'll talk about that in a minute, about people's perceptions of lobbyists and all that. But your, your stock and trade in being a lobbyist, being a good lobbyist, is, is truthfulness and, yes. and accuracy. Absolutely. Uh, and in the past, I think there have been some people that have lobbied. They, ki they, they gave us information, gave the legislature, gave the public information which was not always truthful mm -hmm. or complete. And you can't do that. This is a small town, right? Yes. I and mean, the whole state right. is, a, and everybody knows everybody. Right. And, and if you are giving information, it's valuable and we can use it. We'll, we'll talk about that. But how about a little 101 for Bob Toyofuku? Where were you born and raised and what did you do uh, before that? I was born here, Yeah. Uh, brought up in Kaimuki. Yep. And, uh, Fortunately, went to Iolani School. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. My parents uh, uh, could afford to send me there with, you know, a lot of help. But Did you uh, go on a football scholarship, Bob? <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Got you all choked up here. No. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, I went to Iolani School, uh, graduated, and then went to Tufts University mm -hmm. outside of Boston, and then Boston University Law School. Mm -hmm. That's great. So when so, you were practicing, what kind of law were you practicing? You know, I was a generalist. Um, I did work in uh, corporate, primarily, uh, but I did some litigation. Uh, I did labor. I did estate planning. It was really a general practice. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked for three attorneys, James Morita, uh, James Kamo, and uh, Hiroshi Sakai. Um, uh, they have since passed on. Uh, and then Bert Kobayashi Jr. and I um, formed a law firm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and I was uh, with Bert and James Kushiba and Jeff Watanabe for a while. And then I went out on my own, practiced alone, and then uh, continued uh, along those lines until I went up to the uh, law school to teach. Mm -hmm. And then that started me on a different track. So I've had like about, no, oh, about four different careers. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, well, tell good. us a little bit about the institute that you started. <clears throat> Well, the the Bar Association never had a mm -hmm. true continuing legal education program. Uh, the young lawyer section were the ones that did it. And, you know, depending upon who was the chair of that, yeah. uh, it was hit and miss at times. And so when that opportunity came up, because the law school, in conjunction with the bar, wanted to start an institute. So, and I, I loved continuing ed. Mm -hmm. So I applied and that's when I left practice and I was setting up the institute and teaching at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so I taught for about a year and a half, it was a first year legal methods seminar course and I set up the institute and the, it, it was, became very successful and uh, was self-sufficient in about a year and a half and uh, then I continued on that until Congressman Heftel uh, asked me to join his, uh, uh, as a staff person, right. his office. So I did that, and so that's how more I got into the political arena. Yeah. Well, you're a familiar <coughs> face around the Capitol. Yep, long uh, time. What made the jump or the leap from continuing education in the law into lobbying? You know, when I left uh, Congressman Heftel, uh, I had several choices, you know, I was looking at shall I go back into law practice, uh, I had thought about going into in-house legal in a corporation, mm -hmm. so I had various uh, alternatives. Yeah, had options, yeah. I had options. And uh, the trial lawyers, you know, uh, approached me and asked me if I was interested in lobbying and I said, I really don't know much about lobbying, uh, but they had some interesting issues, mm -hmm. right? And they had some very good attorneys that were familiar with the process, legislative process. And so I said, okay. So it was part-time, only during the session. And so I did that in 1984, first session. And then after the session was over, I set up Pacific Law Institute to continue doing seminars. And so just to supplement the income at that time. Yeah. And uh, so the rest is history. I really enjoyed the lobbying and government affairs. I continued and I still did seminars uh, and it, I, ke I kept going. So it's now 33 years. Yeah. Well, you must be doing something right and enjoying <coughs> it, right? I, I still enjoy it, yeah. Senator. Well, that, so that, I think that's important. That's right? important. So yeah. I tell young people, too, whatever yeah. they're going to do, got to have a passion for it. You got to enjoy it. I mean, why, right. why do something, right. even if it's, you get the money, and you're not fulfilled. You don't enjoy it. You it know, doesn't I, last. I guess at one time when I was younger, yeah. you know, I had thought about toying with the possibility of running for office mm -hmm. and never made the leap to do that. Yeah. But I've always been interested in policy. And although lobbying, you have different issues. I have a variety of clients, diverse. Mm -hmm. But in a very small way, if you can pass a bill or even defeat a bill, you know, in some small way, are impacting policy, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, for or against, True. you know. Pretty, but right. So, but so I enjoy the relationships, yeah. dealing with the political process and and the various issues. Okay. Next to the used car salesman, where do lobbyists fit in in terms of public perception? Okay. <laughs> not, I think not that high. There's a misperception of lobbyists, and I used to lecture at the University of Hawaii uh, uh, administration mm -hmm. course and public administration course. And the first thing that I used to tell them about lobbying, I said, why am I a lobbyist? My job is to educate legislators on an issue mm -hmm. and then advocate for my client, whoever my client is, either for to pass a bill or against to defeat a bill. Mm -hmm. And so people think, well, you know, the, the, the perception of lobbyists, do they go in with a little brown bag of money and you know, absolutely. Where is that untrue. bag? I haven't seen that bag. <laughs> yeah. You have never taken any bag. Well, I nobody, know. nobody tries <laughs> to bribe a that's Republican. Right. That's <laughs> a, that's the problem. But and so, 
you know, it's a matter of, it's hard work. Yeah. Um, if you do it right. If you do it right. You know, I do a lot of research. Yeah. I want to know all the facts on an issue, pro and con, mm -hmm. right? And then the trick, too, is that when you're lobbying, you have to boil it down so that if I'm seeing you, Senator, on an issue, and you may have only 15 minutes during session, I need to get out the important facts to you so you can determine, right. at least in those, because you have thousands of bills you're looking at. And you're not, the only, you. you're not the only person that's coming to see me, too, exactly. right? Exactly. So and you so got other people on the other side or, you know, a third side or, right. or whatever. And so I need to, to synthesize it, really, you know, yeah. condense it so that I can tell you, Senator, here's uh, uh, the facts of the issue. Here's why I am for the issue and try and advocate to get you. You've got to be able to answer questions, too. Yes, absolutely. A lot of people dodge questions or they say, I'll get back to you or yeah. I have to talk to somebody else. You've got the answers I, I, because you've got the knowledge and the yeah, experience. I do the research, yeah. too. On, on, and <clears throat> there are times you can't know everything. So if I don't know what the answer is, mm -hmm. you know, I will tell you, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but I will definitely get back to you later today, if it's during the day or yeah, tomorrow. I can vouch for that, and, that and Bob do, does that. I yeah. do that. Yeah. And another thing, relationships are very important, and you had mentioned accuracy, mm -hmm. and whenever I have said a particular fact yeah. to a legislator, and later on I discover it's not completely accurate, I go back mm -hmm. to that legislator and say, remember I had said this and this and this, Right. And I found out it's not accurate. This is the accurate Very few people do that, but it is important. It's important. And it's like, yeah, you mm -hmm. mentioned, I'm on every Senate committee. That's right. So I get I get a dose of things. But, you know, the, the public thinks that, that just because a, a legislator is a legislator or a, a senator or a president or whatever, that, that we have knowledge that everybody right. else doesn't. Not true. Not and true. how can you have knowledge of agriculture and, right. and corrections and, right. and health care <clears throat> and all that? So you need additional help. Uh, that's why I love the hearing process. I learn something every time. Yes. If I don't, it's not been a good yeah. day. And some of the most unlikely people that come in will tell you something and you say, oh, you know, I never thought of that. That's right. And it's the unintended consequences that's that right. usually hang us up, and, right? And so even on an issue where it's up for a hearing and I'm yeah. sitting in the audience waiting to testify, mm -hmm. and there are other bills that are being heard, I learn a lot. And when the bill I'm on comes up yeah. and other people are testifying, there's some things that I w was not aware of, and you learn that way. Yeah, right. People, <coughs> people think that um, uh, I'm intransigent on, on my views. I am on some when it comes to taxes, for example. You know, no new taxes. That's right, me. Right. Special well, funds. Special funds. Right. <laughs> but on other things, and and even those, I I say, look, if the information I was relying upon proves incorrect or has changed or there's new information. Right. You know, I'm not wedded to a point and say, that's my point, I'm that's not right. going to change. And and I think we've got to be more flexible that well, way. Well, one thing that's important to me is the accessibility of the legislator. Yeah. And uh, I must say that you are very accessible. You make try to make the time, you know, so that's very important to a lobbyist. Yeah. And oftentimes, though, the chair of a committee is very, very busy, sure. especially the money committees. Mm -hmm. And so, and like you were saying earlier, there are tons of people that want to go in yeah. and pitch their position. And so you have to be diligent. And one of the things to establish relationships, and I think many lobbies necessarily don't do it all the time, but th it's the interim s uh, segment between oh, yeah. sessions. Yeah. That like you, now. Like now. If this is why I tell people, this is the time to yes, come in and talk to your lawmaker. Because you're not in session, right. you have time, although people are campaigning as well during campaign season, yeah. but you know, it's a good time to see the person. You can have not 5, 10, 15 minutes, you can have half an hour to an hour right. even. Yeah. Well, Bob, I'll give you as much time as you Thank need. Thank you very know. much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so look, over the years, yeah. <clears throat> you've seen a lot of changes in lobbying laws in the state. Yes. And um, I, I want to get your opinion on that. But you were talking about the, the brown bag with money. I can remember before I was in the legislature, opening day or before, 
oh. lobbyists would come by. I mean, they had filet mignons and lobster and the best wines and all that. Right. And now you can't do that, right? Right. right. And of course, it, we have a financial disclosure as legislators. Yes. We have to indicate uh, gifts that were received, how much, over $200. Uh, I've had a, a process since I was first elected. We log in everything. It's a 50 cent eraser. That's we right. put it down. It's a lot easier that way, right? Yes. You put everything down. No guessing. No guessing. It, but, right. but I mean, it, it's funny because um, uh, the, the things that, that people think you're going to be, uh, you're going to be swayed by. Uh, in, the, in the past, it was, it was cash. Now it's uh, a fancy dinner or a DVD player or something like that. You know, speaking for my colleagues, who I get along with pretty well, and, mm -hmm. and most of whom are really upright people. Some should be in jail, but most of them are good people. <laughs> um, they are honest, and they're not yes. going to be—they're not going to be swayed by that. It's just like when people say, "Oh, those darn lobbyists!" You know, they're the ones that run the show, and they tell the legislators how to think and how to vote and all that. Doesn't happen, does it? No. Um, I think, you know, in the in the past, if you're looking for information. And you get information, and that may tip you one way or the other because it's information you didn't have. That's right. You can credit the lobbyists for giving you that. But ultimately, as a lawmaker, hey, it's my decision. My name's out there on the door. Sure. My reputation is right. there. So I've got to do it. So let's talk about some of those, those changes that have taken place. Have they all been good for lobby laws? You know, so I think maybe some of them have been good. But uh, one of the problems when you're lobbying yeah. is trying to, when I talked about it earlier, is trying to spend a little more time on complex issues with a legislator, mm -hmm. okay? And this is my personal feeling that if I can't see you for an hour because you're too busy yeah. during, the, uh, during the session, right? Mm -hmm. So if I ask you, Senator, let's go to lunch right down the street, mm -hmm. all right? Now, there's a limit. I can take you to lunch as long as it's not, it's not more than $25 You can take the lunch. me to Costco. It's one fifty-seven. dollars dog and that's Pepsi. Right. You know. And yeah. some people won't necessarily do that. But sure. then I will at least have the ability to talk to you for one hour. Mm -hmm. and it's I, not the meal. It's not the meal. It's and discussion. I go, you know, the... You're not going to be swayed even if I gave you an expensive meal. Yeah. Because, you know, but that's... And so the $25 limit, Senator, that has been in place for 35 years. Yes, yeah. right? these days, yeah. With inflation and all right, that. Right, right. So, but the, that's where the perception to me is a little off and the public feels, well, if I'm taking you to a lunch mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, you know, even someplace in town... Yep. and spending 20 bucks for the lunch, right? That's not good. I don't think that's a big deal. Yeah. But the perception is, you know. And perception becomes reality. That's right. Am I trying to influence you by taking you to a nicer place that, yeah. you know. And, and that's where I think the lobbying law should be looked at and, and sort of. As far maybe, as the amounts. Yeah, yeah, maybe modified because it's not like, it, it's time. But if you were to give me a Maserati. Ah. Huh. By the way, I'd like blue, well, midnight blue. Uh, that's something else. But that doesn't sure. happen anymore. No. Yeah. I mean, or, you know, we go golfing, right? And uh, I'm paying for your golf yeah. fees of 100 bucks, and then I provide you with all the golf balls and a bag. Problem. Yeah. Right. Well, and nobody does we, that We anymore. both remember a couple of years ago yeah. a major media company at the time. Oh, Yes named Relativity yes. Media, was heavily lobbying here. They right. did their own lobbying. Right. And they were having private dinners for legislators. Right. They flew in movie stars. They gave everybody DVD players and all that. <laughs> right. uh, again, not me for a couple of reasons. Number one, I voted against it very early on. Yeah. Uh, and they're not in business anymore, Relativity Media, from what yeah. I understand. Yeah. But they, they were so clumsy at it. I think they got fined. They got fined yeah. because they were violating a, a yeah. number of laws. But right. people such as yourself, who are known in the community, who grew up in the community, who went to school here, um, you have an added responsibility and an added burden because you're not about to to give false information or to try to, oh, to yes. color anything. You can't do it. There's, there's your career. right? Honesty there. and integrity yeah. is foremost. really yeah. is. Well, so I guess my... my Real question is, all right, I said never for 25 years about running for office. You said no. 
When are you going to say yes, Toya <laughs> Fuku? When are you going to run for I, office? I doubt it, Senator. <laughs> well, it's one thing. Am I in your district? I think. Yeah, you <laughs> are. You're my neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's really funny because I said one of the reasons I wasn't going to run is because I've been down the legislature. I see how they operate, see what happens. Now, we're doing a lot better than we, we did a decade or so ago in terms of transparency, yeah. but we're still not there. And yeah. we still have things behind closed doors, and we still have those secret meetings and all that. Um, but uh, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to get involved. And again, this is a reminder, August 13th, primary election. And I know some people, they don't like this candidate, they don't like that candidate. You got to vote. You got to get involved. Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, we went from number one in the nation in voting to number 50, and that's, that's pretty I know, sad. pretty sad. So we've got to do it. Well, look, we've just got a little bit of time left. He talks so much, Toy <laughs> Fuku. <I know. laughs> um, Almost as much as you, Senator. Mm -hmm. What do you think are going to be the big issues in 2017? I know that one issue that's going to come up that's going to be somewhat controversial is um, the death with dignity. Aid again, aid and dying. Yeah, coming back again. I from think Oregon. it's coming back. Yeah. Uh, well, they're doing. They're running radio and TV commercials now. Yeah, it's compassion and choices. Exactly. And uh, are you representing them? I think I will. Be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but I believe in that issue. Yeah. And you know, it's controversial. Yeah. You know, but, but. Uh, well, it'll have a full discussion again. I mean, my yes. whole problem with it is the physician part. Death with dignity, great. You know, helpful. Yeah, but. Doctors first do no harm. Wait, oh, Hopefully right. we didn't do any <coughs> harm here. And I enjoyed having our special guest, Bob Toyofuku. Thank gonna, you, Senator. You're going to see him in the community and around the, the Capitol. Again, that's not a threat. That's promise, right? <laughs> yes. And uh, so we look forward to working with you, Bob, and, and to getting more of your information. Great. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate you having me on your show. And it's called A Better Day because that's what a we want. A better day. A better day. Right. So thank you all. Have a wonderful summer. We'll see you next month. And next month, I may have a real scary day guest and take a real risk. Aloha and thank you for joining us.